Welcome to Lemons.com in our lab video series on Cisco ASA SSL VPN. You can find a complete list of SSL VPN videos on the website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we are going to start by discussing similarities and differences between IPsec and SSL VPN. This is from the perspective of how the tunnel groups and group policies are actually being used. And then we're going to demonstrate that later on in this lab as part of our configuration. So let's first uh, do a quick review on the IPsec. Uh, let me bring up a diagram that I can draw on. So right here, let me change the color. There you go. So if you have an experience configuring IPsec for the remote user VPN, you know that what user have is a .pcf file, where they, they create it manually themselves because you gave them the pre-share key, and then they can just enter that in the profile, or you hand it over the whole PCF file, so the user just install that on their IPsec client. But when user connects, they will get mapped to whatever tunnel group is defined on the PCF files. So here you have a PCF file, and for example, if the group in this case is contractor, then it will be dropped into a tunnel group called contractor. And the tunnel group will determine things like which authentication method to use, whether it's the username, password, or certificate. And then after successful authentication, the user might end up in a group policies defined as part of the default group policies like we do right here, and then it will end up in the group policies called contractor. Or the user can also be dynamically placed by whether it is a per user attribute or OU attribute returned by the radio servers to pretty much any group policies you like. So right here, if you have OU equal employee, even though they're coming in through a ton of group called contractor, that might be switched to a group policies called employee. Same thing here if the OU equal engineer gets returned. Okay, so it's pretty much, uh, for the most part, it's straightforward because the, in most cases, people just go ahead and use the default group policy. So that's just be a one-to-one -one map all the way through from the tunnel group to the group policy itself. But now with the SSL VPN, things change quite a bit. First, let me get rid of all the lines I drew. Now there are several ways that the user can get mapped to a tunnel groups. And let's start from the top right here. This we have it listed. First, we have a group URL. And group URL is a URL specific to a particular tunnel group that the user can go to directly to access that tunnel group. So right here in our example, we have a vpn.labnits.com slash contractor. So when user enter that URL in the browser, they will get dropped directly into the corresponding tunnel group. In this case, it's contractor. Okay, so for different tunnel groups, and you're going to have a different group URL for that. Next, we have our group list. And group list is a drop down, as you will see in a sec when we do the configuration. It's a drop down that contains multiple tunnel groups that user can choose from. And depends on which option or which drop down that user select, it will get placed in to the corresponding tunnel group. In this case, if you choose a drop down call contractor, then you will be placed into the contractor tunnel group. Okay, so the third method is a certificate attribute mapping, and this is specific to certificate authentication. If you do certificate authentication, where you can actually map a particular certificate attribute, like an OU attribute to a tunnel group. And in that case, the user won't even know which tunnel group they actually get put into. So right here, if you have like an OU equal contractor, you can come up with a rules. So and again, this is something we'll look at in our future lab videos, and then you can map that particular strings into a particular tunnel group. All right, and the last method, which is the default method, and that is to get all the users to come in through the main URL. And an example here is the vpn.labmins.com. And then assuming you have the group list disabled because group list, once you have that enabled, unless you have also a group list configured for the default web VPN group, then you will pretty much never be placed under the default web VPN group. But assuming they have a group list uh, disabled, then all the users that's coming in through this particular URL will be placed under this default web VPN tunnel group. Okay, so in that case, there's no confusion for the users as far as which dropdowns or which URL they need to go to. So everybody just basically come in through a single URL. And then if you have a single group policy to deal with, then you can just use the default group policies and then map them directly to that particular group policies. But usually that's not the case. You most likely have multiple group policies for different groups of users. And in that case, you can use, again, either the per user attribute in the event that you have the local users on the ASA, where you can define the per user attributes, or you can also use the attribute or radius attributes that's gonna be returned from your radius server to kind of 
switch the user into different group policies. Okay, but as far as the entry point, everybody will be coming through the same default WebVPN tunnel group. And the only problem pretty much with this method is that here we have the, we under the assumption that all the VPN users is okay with the same settings of the tunnel group. But in case that you have to have like a unique tunnel group settings for different groups of users, then you might need to implement one of these three methods in conjunction with this default tunnel group. Okay, and a good example for that is you have certain users that needs to lock in using just the username password, and then you have another group of users that needs to do a certificate authentication, for example, and then the settings for the tunnel group will be different, which kind of mandates you to have multiple tunnel groups. Okay, so hopefully that uh, explanation kind of clear things up as far as the different entry points, as far as how user can now access the tunnel group when they use the SSL VPN as opposed to pretty much there's only the PCF file that defines how the user is coming in earlier with the IPsec VPN. Okay, so now let's see how all of those are configured. Okay, for our lab topology, we have our ASA name firewall one here with the IP of .252 for both inside and outside interface. For our server, we have in .2008 that's acting as our domain control, the IP of 162.16.32.40. And then we have our Cisco ICE running version 1.2 at the IP of .102 as our radius server, which we will use later on in this lab. Now for our test machine, we're going to be using our LM Win 7 non-core, which is a non-domain computer at the IP of 192.168.10.13 on the outside of the ASA. And the test user that we're going to be using, and this is the AD user, is called contractor, 1 underscore AD, and I will show you this later on on the Active Directory. It's part of the AD group called contractor, and then we're going to return an OU equal SSL underscore contractor, which is a group that will be created a little bit later as well. Okay, so from our previous lab video, we haven't really configured anything on the SSL VPN. All we did is just install the certificate and then enable the web lock-in using the enable outside command. So well, the first thing we're going to kind of explore here is the default configuration of the SSL VPN. So without any kind of configuration, and let's go ahead and see what we have as far as the authentication or access experience. So by default, the ASA used a local uh, user authentication. So first we need to create a local user that we can use to authenticate. So let's go ahead and do a username. We're going to call this contractor1, and then just do a password Cisco. Okay, so now let me bring up the test machine on the outside right here. Bring up the web browser. I kind of have a quick link or a bookmark right here that helps me goes directly to the vpn.labmins.com. And this is the default login page. So we go ahead and use the username that we just uh, created, contractor1, and then Cisco. Go ahead, lock in. You can see that we get drops into the portal page of the clientless VPN and this you might get this a different experience depending on what kind of VPN or any connect license where there's premium which allows you to get to the clientless or if you were to have essential you might have a little a different experience but you should be able to lock in and now since we have successfully locked into the VPN if you do a show VPN session DB or database you can look at the user session so right here we have our username contractor1 coming from the IP 10.13, which is a public IP. You can see protocol, it said it's clientless and it's utilizing the NConnect premium license. And what I wanna kind of make a note here is that the tunnel group that's coming in is the default web VPN group. We are coming in through the main URL. If you remember going back to my diagram right here, coming in through the main URL then you get dropped into a default web VPN group. And since we haven't, really define or set up any kind of uh, radius attributes or anything like that. By default, the default web VPN groups, default group policies points to the default group policies. And that's why right here we have our default group policies for our group policies. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, instead of using default group policies, we're going to create our own group policies. So the command is group policies. We're going to call it SSL um, contractor. It will be internal. And then for the attribute, let's give it a banner so we can tear them apart. So banner value, let's call this one contractor only. And then let's do the 
simultaneous lock-in, let's say we only want them to lock in one at a time. And then for example, VPN, I'm just going to throw some commands under here. Idle timeout, let's say we want to do 15 minutes. We'll get disconnected if there's no activity. And then for the entire session timeout, we can do 60 minutes, so no more than an hour. And then for the VPN tunnel protocol, we only want our contractor to only use the the web VPN or the clientless VPN. So it will be SSL dash clientless. Okay. And like I mentioned at this point, if all you're dealing with is a single group policies, then we could have uh, just go ahead and define a contractor group policies as part of the default group policies of default web VPN group. But let's assume that uh, we are planning for multiple group policies in the future. So let's not do that for now. But instead, the next thing we're going to do is to create a new tunnel group. So just to demonstrate these uh, different methods that the user may be coming in, which is a group URL and group list. So first we're going to enable group list and the command for that is part of the web VPN sub configuration is right here tunnel group list with dashes in between and then enable okay now we can go ahead and create additional tunnel group first we're going to call it SSL let's do one for employee okay type it will be remote access and I just want to make a quick note right here that both IPsec RA and WebVPN, we are running version 9.1, so those are considered deprecated at this point. So everything's kind of a remote user VPN. It's just type remote access. Okay, and then our tunnel group, again, SSL. Let me just do up arrow, it might be easier actually. Then for our general attributes, let's leave that out for now. So, you know, we could have gone and do a default group policies. But let's leave that out for now. And then let's move over to the web VPN attribute. And this is where you define the group alias, which is the strings of text that you want to appear as part of the dropdown on the group list, as you will see. So for group alias, we want to the text to show up as employee all in caps and then enable. And then you can see right here, we also have an option to specify the group URL, which is our second method of user access. And here we have to type out the URL in full. So for us, it will be vpn.labminutes.com slash stu employee. Okay, and don't forget to put enable at the end. And that should be it for now for SSI employee group. So let me do show run tunnel group. It's right here. Next, we create a second tunnel group for our contractor. Type remote. And for our general attribute for this one, let's map it to default group policies. Call SSI contractor, which is the one that we just created. And then same thing, we'll get under the web VPN for our group alias is contractor enable. And then for the group URL, HTTPS uh, VPN dot lab minutes dot com slash contractor. Make sure I have no typo in that. Okay, lab minutes dot com slash contractor enter all right so now that we have the two tunnel groups okay let me do show run tunnel group two different tunnel groups that have been enabled for a tunnel group list as well as group url let's go ahead and test that so go back to our test machine right here instead of going to our regular vpn actually you can see that when you click lock on now we are presented with an additional field, which is a dropdown that we can select between a contractor or employee. Okay, and this is a result of us enabling the group list. And right here, pretty much we lost access to the default web VPN group since we did not configure any kind of group alias under that tunnel group. So now we only have access to this two tunnel group that we created. So let's go ahead and first lock in as a group contractor. 
and use our contractor one. Okay, you can see that we successfully logged in and now we presented with the banner that we configured for our contractor group policies. Click continue and then we are back at our web VPN portal. Okay, we do show VPN uh, web. You can see now that before we have both default tenant group and default group policies, now that we are coming in through our SSL underscore contractor tunnel group and landed on the SSL contractor group policy. So again, from here, we actually took, you know, let me uh, bring up, bring back my diagram right here. So we, what we just did, we basically took this path right here. So group list ended up in the contractor tunnel group, and then we have a default group policies. All right, so let me uh, lock out of this. And now next we're gonna try to lock in as a group employee using actually the same account. Although it's uh, kind of strange, you know, using a username that the contractor account locking in as a employee. The password is Cisco. Lock in, you can see that you get dropped right away into a web. And now going back and do a show command, you can see that this time we're coming in through a tunnel group as a SSI employee, but since we did not specify any kind of default group policies, we get dropped into the default group policies. So but nevertheless, to demonstrate that the drop downs or how the user used to drop down to access different tunnel. And using this method right here, you pretty much rely on the user to select the correct group that they supposed to lock in as. So it's possible that you might not have a group name as obvious as this, and then the user might accidentally lock into a wrong group, which we'll look at how to deal with that a little bit later. So next we're going to try to test our group URL. So now let me modify the URL. So vpn.labmius.com first we will test the contractor one. So slash contractor, you can see that the drop down has now disappeared and that's because the ASA knows exactly to place you into the contractor tunnel group. So we just came through this right here and then get dropped directly to the contractor tunnel group and we can go ahead and lock in Again, contractor one. Same thing, get the banner, successfully lock in, coming back here, just double check. Then we have a contractor tunnel group and contractor group policies. So same thing if you're trying to go back and do a slash to employee, which is our group URL for our second tunnel group, and use the same account, lock in, drops in there, and here we have our tunnel group employee. So okay, the second method works just fine. And those are basically the first two ways that you can get the user to come in and then put them into a corresponding tunnel group. Okay, so you can see that the group URL method might be a little bit better compared to a group list. Uh, as far as there's no confusion for user to, um, or they have to select anything here, just provide them with a URL that they're supposed to use to lock in. But again, as far as the security is concerned, if you don't lock it down properly and the user discovers somebody else's or a different group's URL, they can potentially lock in and then consequently be granted different privileges or accessed 